Hey guys, what is up? It's Ben Malal here and thanks for joining me in part two of the complete guide to Facebook advertising and I'm extremely excited for this part because we're actually going to dive deep into the juicy stuff which is the campaign objectives and how to utilize them on the highest level. Um, so if you haven't by the way watched part one, check that out first before diving uh, into this one. Okay, so with that being said, what we're actually going to do today is we're going to actually talk about every campaign objective and how to really use it correctly, how to utilize it, when to use it, how to use it on the highest level with the right configurations, etc, etc. So let's just go right in. First and foremost, for those of you that are new to Facebook advertising, I'm going to Let's talk a little bit about the basic stuff here and what is exactly a campaign and how does it work and how does it relate to the other sections of um, um, of the actual campaign like the ad set and the ad so first of all we have the campaign level okay under that we have the ad sets or ad set and under the ad sets and ad set you have the ads so underneath the campaign ad sets underneath the ad sets ads campaign town ad sets house ads rooms in the house okay excellent now what is each one of these the campaign is actually where you choose your objective where you choose what your goal is uh to achieve which can be leads which can be video views which can be website conversions and we're going to dive deep into uh, those in a second it's basically what you want facebook to achieve for you okay you can decide one objective per campaign now on the ad set level that's where all the all the actual work is done that's the whole back end <clears throat> the whole back end of the ad which is the targeting the budgets the bids the placements mobile desktop but when you target males females uh, what you're bidding on what you want uh, what you want to optimize for even though you pick uh, an objective on a campaign you can actually decide on the ad set to optimize for something else underneath that campaign so it's really basically everything that happens on the back end Okay, now on the ad, which is underneath the ad set, is what the user eventually sees. This, that's actually the front end of the ad. The ad is where you actually pick the ad copy, the images, and anything that really the user eventually sees on their feed. So today in this video, we're actually gonna dive deep into campaign. We're gonna talk completely on the campaign level, the campaign objectives. On the next videos, we're gonna talk about the ad sets and the ads. So, first of all, here's a tip for you. When you're actually picking the campaigns, make sure that you pick one objective per campaign. One objective per campaign and one ad set per targeting if you decide to target different segments. So, what I mean by that is if, for example, you have a necklace, which that necklace can be bought uh, by two types of people. One, it can be bought for, for my woman to herself. And the second type of person that may buy it is a male to her, to his girlfriend, wife, fiance. You have two different types of people. When you're actually doing something like that, you want to divide the ad sets. Okay, so what actually happens is when you're actually doing uh, one ad set, and let's say you combine everything together, what happens is that Facebook will, after, after running for a while, maybe a few days, even sometimes a few hours, it will eventually decide on a winning demographic and targeting and will eventually stop to show your ad to what it, what's not converting for you, which can be good in, in one reason, but it's not entirely true. So if, for example, we have, uh, we have this necklace and we're targeting male and female together, Facebook can see that, th that fe uh, females are mostly the people that convert on the objective that you told it to, and then it can decide to only show your ad to females. Now, that's good, but we don't want to completely not show our ad to males because even though most of the females buy, it doesn't mean that males won't buy as well. That's why uh, I'll tell you a little secret on how we work. We start with a we start a low budget ad and we target everything, including male, including female, including mobile, including desktop. If the ad works, we scale out in a way that we have we'll have an ad uh, only targeting mobile. We'll have an ad only targeting desktop. We'll have an ad only targeting male, only targeting female. This way, we're really touching on every segment of the audience here. 
without losing uh, without losing portions of our audience because even if we're even though we're targeting a specific uh, offer or product to a specific audience, Facebook will eventually optimize for a certain segment of that audience and and eventually show the ad mostly to what's converting the most. But even though that section of the audience is converting the most, we don't want to completely neglect that entire other section. So for example, uh, my ads that are mostly my lead ads for my brand, for my ebook, for my courses is targeted to both male and female. But if I go over my breakdown and I see who really sees my ads, I'll see that about, about 90% of the people that get my ad are males. Facebook decides to not really show my ads to females. That's because mostly males react to my posts. But that doesn't mean that there aren't females out there that will react and convert to my offers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release another ad that's only targeted to females. Okay, same thing by the way with desktop and mobile. You'll notice that Facebook will eventually decide who works better and will stop, now, I won't say stop, but will will we'll start to show your ad um, mostly to the placement that works uh, more for your ads. So if, for example, desktop is converting better, it will not show as much your ad to mobile. Okay, same thing with right column um, and so on and so on. Now, another thing, by the way, is if you put a few ads underneath one ad set, it will start to split test them. So if, for example, you want a few images or a few ad copies, you can actually decide to, uh, to put a few ads underneath one ad set. And what will happen there is that Facebook will um, will show different ads to different people underneath that one ad set. But I don't recommend to use more than two ads underneath one ad set because, again, Facebook will decide on a winning ad way too fast and you won't really get a good indication. Okay, we'll show your ads unevenly. So that's why I usually create a, if I want to create, if I want to test a lot of different images and a lot of different ad copies, I'll, I'll create a few ad sets and I'll put different ads underneath each ad set because only the ad set will, uh, because the ad set is where you pick your budget, only the ad set will evenly show your ad um, uh, to the people. Okay, so if for example, you have an ad and you have a daily budget of $20 and you have two ads underneath that ad, under that, under, underneath that ad set, I mean, Facebook will not show your ads evenly. Let's say you have four ads, it won't show each ad $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, five, 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 five. yeah. It won't show your ad evenly $5, $5, $5, $5. It will show one ad $12, one ad $3, one ad $4, and then another ad maybe $1. Because it decides that one of them is already better than the other ones, even though it's all, all, all only been about a few minutes, a few hours. That's why it's important to do your split tests correctly by separating them per ad sets, okay? So first of all, a campaign. What is a campaign? A campaign is how you define your goal. Now, when creating a campaign, of course, you'll need to, to choose the campaign objective. The campaign objective will, like I said, contain your ad sets and your ads um, and will share the same objective throughout the whole campaign. So all your ad sets will be the same objective of the campaign. Objective, like I said, that tells Facebook your goal and what to optimize for. In total, today there are 15 objectives to choose from. You can choose only one objective per campaign. And um, is there anything else that I didn't talk about here? Oh yeah, uh, like I said before as well, when you actually have an ad set that uh, you, you can decide on the ad set level, you can actually decide what you want to bid for. You can have it optimized for, let's say, link clicks, but you can you can bid, by bid I mean pay for either the clicks that you get or you can pay for impressions. Sometimes you want to pay for uh, how many people see the ad and not how many people click the ad. Sometimes it works better than the other. It's all about testing and seeing what works better, but you can actually change and decide what you want to pay, uh, what, you wanna, what you wanna be charged for. By the way, I won't go over every objective. I won't go every uh, over all the 15 objectives just because I think that some of them are, don't really need my, uh, my explanation because they're pretty self-explanatory and that's because they're not really that important. So these are the objectives uh, that, that we have. We have boost your posts, which we call a PPE, page post engagement, promote your page, reach people near your business, increase brand awareness, increase your reach send people to a destination on or off Facebook, which we call call clicks to website, CTW, get installs of your app, raise attendance at your event, get video views, collect leads 
for your business, increase conversions on your website. We call that WC, website conversions. Increase engagement in your app, get people to claim your offer, promote a product uh, catalog and get people to visit your stores. Now, something I need to, um, to tell you is that on your side, this might be, you might see a different, uh, a different um, dashboard. And by different, I mean it might be called differently. You might not see boost your posts. You might see page post engagement. You might not see send people to a destination on or off Facebook. You might see traffic or clicks to website. That doesn't mean it's a different objective. It just, they just, Facebook just sometimes calls it differently depending on the ad account. Okay, I had clients where uh, the names were different than what I see here. And I had people that were the same exact names, but it doesn't matter because uh, the ads do the same thing, okay? So number one, most important as well, increase conversions on your website. Like I said, conversions, WC, which is basically to get more actions on your website. The conversions objective is optimized to increase sales, signups, purchases, or any other actions on your website. The Facebook algorithm will basically optimize your campaign to get the most of the conversion that you choose to optimize for according to your bid, budget, and target audience. And when creating an ad set, you just simply choose the conversion you want to optimize for, as you can see um, on the image here. Now, this only works with the pixel that is installed on your website. For those of you that don't know what the pixel is, it's actually a piece of code that you install in the code of your website. This is actually what integrates between Facebook and your website, which can be a blog, which can be a landing page, which can be your store. It's really important that you have this pixel installed because that's what's gonna um, track your conversions and what's gonna let you eventually optimize for certain actions, which can be an add to cart, which can be a lead, which can be a purchase. Okay, now the more uh, of, of data that your ad account pixel has on a specific action, the better it will become. Because Facebook can't just know, um, let, let's say you have you want to optimize for purchases, you can't just decide um, a conversion purchase and then to let Facebook optimize for purchases if you don't have any purchases at all. Because Facebook needs that data to know what kind of people buy from you. So then it can show your ad to people that are related to the people that bought from you before because it has that data. Same thing with leads, same thing with any other action. Okay, so I'm gonna get to that right now. That's why you wanna always choose the conversion that is always most valuable to you, but only if it has around 20, 30 conversions a day. If your most valuable conversion has less than that, then you wanna try using a different one, like add to cart or view contents because let's say you have a purchase and a purchase you have, let's say 10 a day, which is not really enough for Facebook to optimize fully on that action. But because you have 10 purchases a day, you might have about 30 ads to cart, which is good. You can optimize for ad to cart because that's a lot of data. And if you have 30 ads to cart, you probably have about a hundred minimum of view content. View content is when the person just lands on your um, website. Okay, that's the view content pixel. That's where you always want to optimize for the conversion that's most valuable for you, as long as you have 20 to 30 conversions a, a day. If you don't, go one step back and optimize for one step back. So if you have a store, if you don't have 30 purchases a day, optimize for ads to cart. If you don't have 30 ads to cart a day, 20 to 30, then optimize for view content, okay? If you wanna get leads, you're into lead generation, then uh, for example, that's uh, that's what I mostly do. I have uh, I have a few steps in my funnel. So I have uh, my view content, which is my landing page, and I have a lead when somebody puts their email. After that, I have uh, an upsell, okay? Like somebody can buy a product for me for $37. Of course, I have much more leads than sales, and I have much more view contents than leads. If I have 30 sales a day, I can, 20 to 30 sales a day, I can optimize for these sales. But if I don't, I can optimize for leads as long as I have 20 to 30 leads a day because that's what has most the most data. The more data you have on a certain action, um, the more Facebook will optimize for it, okay? So uh, like I said, in order for you to use the conversions objective, you need to have the Facebook pixel installed. The Facebook pixel is a little piece of code you should put on your website in order to be able to track conversions and build audiences. You can. Uh, using the pixel, you can actually create certain audiences of people. So you can create an audience of all the people that view content on your website, which is extremely powerful because you can then send them new ads. If, for example, I create an audience of all the people that 
got into my, my website and didn't put their email, I can create an ad to those people. Okay, a different ad. Now, how do you install the Facebook Pixel? Uh, now, it's a pretty complex issue, but I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. You need to generate the Pixel from your account, which is in the Ads Manager, All Tools, Pixel. And once you generated the Pixel, you can either install it on every page of your website um, with the standard events placed in the correct areas, or you just send it over to a developer to do it for you. Now, the standard events are events like um, Ads to Cart, View Content, Lead, Purchase, uh, there's a few more I less use, but it's basically these standard events where you put at specific places on your website. So an add to cart pixel, you'll put on your cart page if you have a store. A purchase pixel, you'll put on the thank you page after the person buys the product for you. That's how Facebook knows that somebody bought the product for you from you because nobody reaches the thank you page other than buyers. If you have a lead, if you have an email, like a lead generation uh, landing page, then you'll want to put the lead pixel on the thank you page after they put the email because again, nobody reaches that page other than people that put their email on the page before. Understood? Excellent. And if you're into e-commerce, if you use Shopify, you don't have to install it manually. Um, you don't have to put in the code. You can actually use Shopify as integration or you can use Trackify or Pixel Perfect, which I actually recommend more than the Shopify integration just because you have more options. Both of these are excellent apps. I recommend them both equally. So. Just use one of them. Now, the next step is to reset really up your conversions. How do you really define your conversions? Once the Facebook Pixel is installed on your website, you can define your conversions. Now, there are two ways to set up your conversions, standard events and custom conversions. Both of them, both of them will allow you to track actions on your website. A standard event, like I said before, are the events that uh, like add to cart, like purchase, like leads, like complete um, registration, like view content and a few more where you put in specific specific um, areas on your website. Like I said, the add to cart pixel in the cart page, the purchase pixel in the thank you page. The custom conversions is something that you just, you just put one pixel on your whole entire website and then you create the custom conversions in your ad manager by using URL rules. So if, for example, a thank you page, for me, it's, let's say, benmalol.com slash thank you, I can create that in, in the ad manager. So anybody that reaches benmalol.com slash thank you will fire a lead pixel because, like I said, anybody that reaches the thank you page is um, um, just basically gave me his email. So... By the way, you're currently only limited to 40 custom conversions, which is, I'll be honest, more than enough. Uh, you can delete them, of course, if you're not using them anymore. Facebook will probably let you put more um, uh, in the future. Now, no matter which you choose to use, just make sure that you install your standard event or set up your conversion, your custom conversions to, to happen on the page that your traffic will land on when finishing the conversion, like your offer page, like your thank you page. So when do you want to choose and increase conversions on your website? You want to use increased conversion on your website, which is, of course, like I said, website conversions when there are specific actions you want users to do, like signing up to your blog, downloading an ebook, or buying a product. Using the increased conversions on your website will help you reach the people who are most likely to convert out of the targeted audience. And again, you want to use the website conversion ad when you have enough data on the certain action. If you don't have enough data on the certain action, then you want to use a, a, a different um, ad, like a PPE, or like a clicks to website, or like a video views, which we'll get to now um so the second type of ad that i'm going to talk about is the promote your page ad okay which is basically just get more page likes it's the objective is to just get more users to like your facebook page but really nothing really nothing more than that the ads in this objective are really only solely uh, aimed at just getting page likes and won't really send users to your website the, that because the priority of it is to really only get you likes I'll be honest, it's not really recommended because other other ads will get you likes um, because eventually people that see your ad will like your page. I've actually, uh, I've used promote your page a few times, but it was so incredibly inefficient because you're literally spending money on something that, that you get for free with other types of ads. Maybe in the future, Facebook will make this more efficient, but currently it's a really inefficient ad and I won't recommend to use it. Uh, when to use promote your page? 
no good reason currently and I'm being completely honest like I said any other ad will work amazing to get likes to your page you don't need a specific ad like for the promote your page ad any clicks to website ad, any PPE ad especially a PPE ad will get you a ton of likes anyway um, the third type of ad that we're going to talk about is the send people to your website which is a link clicks ad the clicks to website CTW that's how we call it which is basically just to get more traffic it will help you get more clicks on your ads and have more users visiting your website your campaign will be optimized to reach people who are more likely to click on your ad and, and basically reach your website but not necessarily take a specific action the only thing that the clicks to website ad is responsible for is to just get people on your website what they do on your website doesn't matter Facebook will find the people that are most likely to click on that ad to your website. One, do you want to choose send people to your website? When site traffic is your main goal or when you don't have specific conversions to optimize for um, or when for some very strange reason you just don't have the Facebook pixel installed because the send people to your website, the clicks to website ad isn't reliant on the Facebook pixel. Actually, none of the ad objectives other than website conversion ads are related to your pixel. So um, understand that any other ad other than the website conversion ad isn't rela related to your pixel. So Facebook doesn't need data for it to work good. Um, now you might use this option if you have a blog post that you want people to read and for you page views have much higher value than an actual conversion or you just think that it's enough to get people to your website to eventually convert. Um, or if you don't have a lot of data on your pixel yet to optimize for any conversion, then a clicks to website ad is really good. Sometimes, by the way, you'll notice that the clicks to website ad works better than a website conversion ad because don't always let Facebook decide what's better for you. Even though uh, I have, let's say, uh, leads that are really good for me, I can optimize for leads, but sometimes just people clicking on my landing page will get more leads than Facebook actually getting leads because Facebook isn't a perfect system. Okay, you have to understand that. It optimizing for leads won't always get you the best, um, the, the cheapest leads. Sometimes I just need people to get to my website and I'll get a ton of leads because I know that my, my landing page is optimized to eventually get people to put their email in. I don't need Facebook to decide for me who, uh, who, who will eventually put my, uh, their email in. I know that if I get a ton of people to my website, a portion of them would put their email, even it will be eventually cheaper than a lead ad. That can be the same with a purchase ad or an add to cart ad. Okay, so always split us, always test out things. So again, I'm not saying the website conversion ads work less good. 99% of the times, website conversion ads work better for me than clicks to website ads. But always test and see uh, what works better. Just gonna take a sip of my coffee. Okay, so fourth objective we're gonna talk about is getting installs for your app, which is mobile app installs. It's to really basically get people to download your mobile app with ads that direct straight to your app page on the App Store or Google Play. Download apps are available when you have the Facebook SDK in your app and the app is listed on Facebook. Okay, you need to integrate it. Installing the Facebook SDK on your app is a similar process kind of to installing the Facebook pixel on your website. Now, what do you wanna use um, get installs of your app? I'll be honest, from our experience, this is really the most cost-effective way to get downloads um, of your app or your client's app. It's not only really cost-effective, it's also it has, has a huge potential to get you the highest quality users, those who you really want to download um, and use your app because Facebook really knows the types of people that that eventually um, download, download your app. So it really knows who to show your ad to. Okay, we've noticed extremely good results. Uh, I'll be honest, we haven't experienced a lot of, of using this ad objective, but from the clients that we worked with, which their main objective was to get installs for their app, the, 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 um, this campaign objective worked really, really, really well. The fifth ad objective that I'm gonna talk about is collect leads to your business. Basically lead generation, getting users details directly on Facebook. Now, Getting leads directly on Facebook newsfeed um, is extremely efficient because what it actually does is it doesn't really send users to your website. 
it takes their information that they have on Facebook and puts it um, in your form. So name, email, phone number, directly on Facebook. So you can actually um, eventually download the leads you get to a C CSV file uh, connected to your, to your CRM system. Um, and lead, leads, lead ads are basically, they're available mobile, desktop news feeds. And the thing I've noticed about lead ads is that it it's, gives you extremely cheap leads but the thing about it is that it doesn't it, it doesn't really get you the high quality leads because a lot of times people that that have their information on Facebook don't really use that information. Like a lot of emails, um, like I know that my my email on Facebook is is an email that uh, I don't use anymore, and I opened it like seven years ago, and you can probably relate to that. So understand that it's not always the best way to get your leads. Okay, I've noticed. Um, Better, better way to get leads with just the website conversion lead um, lead campaign, okay? Because people that uh, come to, for example, my offer, which is to get a free ebook, they need to put their email and they need to put a good email to get the ebook because the email the ebook is sent to their email. So if they give me a fake email or an email that they're not using, then they're not getting the ebook. But with this lead generation ad, it might not really work uh, work good for me. But for some businesses, it will work good. It's all about trying and testing. Um, and this is basically how you build it. You create the form, you decide what you want on the form, and it will take the information from Facebook and put it automatically in the form when somebody clicks on it. If they don't have that information, they can, of course, fill it out. Want to use Collect Leads to your business? Um, like I said, lead ads can be very useful when you don't have a website or a landing page yet. Of course, that's true as well. If you don't have a landing page or a website, just using the connect leads to your business ad objective is extremely efficient. And um, mm -mm. yes, this tip, I already gave you this tip. So we're just gonna move on. Six ad objective we're gonna talk about is increasing engagement to your app. Now this is a bit different than, uh, than getting installs because here you just want people to engage with your app, you want people to enter your app. So this can be um, for apps that have recently had an update or a change and they want people to come back to the app. So they'll use an ad, uh, an ad like this, okay? When do you wanna use this? When, um, when you already acquired users to engage with your app, if you have a new feature update you want to promote, if you are selling a specific product on your app and you want to promote that. So it's for existing ads, Ex existing apps, sorry. Um, now the seventh ad that we're going to talk about is increasing brand awareness, making more people familiar with your brand. Reach more people in order to get them to pay attention to your brand. Increase brand awareness is optimized to reach as many people as possible who are more likely to pay attention to your ad. Now the thing about this ad is that it's, it doesn't really have any objective. It's also about getting that image or that ad out there to be shown to as many people as possible. When to use increased brand awareness, if you don't necessarily aim to currently get a conversion of traffic to your site, for example, if you need to spread the word about your brand but don't necessarily want users to reach a specific page on your site or take a specific action. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I ever want this? Like, why would I just want to show my image without getting any conversions or clicks? I'll give you a good example. Um, so today, for example, I have a webinar in a few hours. Now, all the people I already have, I have already, I already stopped promoting it. So all the people that signed up, which is about a thousand people, I've already signed up to the webinar. Now, I want to remind everybody that the webinar is today at five. So what I'll do, I'll, 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 I'll create an increased brand awareness. I don't need them to click anything. I just need them to see the ad and remind them that the webinar is at five. Most of the time, you'll never use this. I'll be honest. Most of the time, you always want to get a conversion. I use this in very specific scenarios like the webinar reminder scenario. Um, mm -mm. Friendly tip, if you do have a good website, it's worth considering using the clicks or conversions objective instead of brand awareness. They will also get your brand awareness and it will be optimized to reach people who are more qualified to become high quality user. Using brand awareness is basically just buying impressions. Like I said, um, brand awareness is only to get your ad out there without making the user do anything. That's why I'll be honest, using a clicks objective or a website conversion objective or even a PPE will probably give you the same results. Okay, but with an objective as well. 
So there, um, there's sometimes there's no really specific reason to use this. The eighth ad that we're going to talk about is reaching people near your business. Now this is really perfect for small uh, small business owners, small local business owners. Um, you can actually reach people around your business. You choose a location and then you put a radius of one to fifty miles. So you 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 decide that you are a local business, you're a restaurant, you're a bike shop, you do tattoos. You want to only reach people ten miles around your area. You'll do something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, ninth ad we're going to talk about, and this is a very important type of ad. It's the boost your post which we call the page post engagement or in short the PPE. Now when you want to get as much engagement as possible, this objective is optimized to people who are more likely to like, share and comment on your post at the lowest cost. According to your target audience bid and budget, it's basically to get as many people as possible to like, comment, share and tag their friends and basically engage with your post as much as possible. It's optimized for those people that are more likely to do that. Okay, so if you want your post to get viral, if you want your post to have a lot of social proofs, a lot, a lot of likes, um, to basically make it look good, a PPE is the way to go. As well, um, I've noticed that PPE sometimes uh, works really, really, really good, even sometimes better than a website conversion ad. Now, when you want your ad to become more viral and you want to reach more people, and when you actually don't have a lot of data on your pixel or ad account, like we talked about before, you can't always use a website conversion ad. A PPE ad might be a good way to start because it doesn't need any data. It just, Facebook already knows who to show your ad to. So a PPE is a really good way to kickstart a new ad and ad account. So you have a new ad and you wanna get some likes, you wanna get some shares, you wanna get some, um, some tags or whatever, a PPE is a good place to start. It will show your ad to people that are more likely to tag, share, uh, click on it, and then you can use that data to eventually use a website conversion ad. Okay, so, oh, by the way, like I said, sometimes this works better for us than a website conversion ad or even a clicks to website ad because the virality of it sometimes gets more sales and more conversions than the actual website conversion ad. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's all about testing and seeing what works best. Tenth ad I want to talk about is the raise attendance at your event. Um, now this is basically it's optimized for getting event responses and attendance. But I'll really I'll be really honest. I won't really I've never used this ad by the way. Um, and I'll be honest. I'll probably not use this until until it's more optimized because it's not about the user clicking on attending. It's about the user actually attending the event. It might be a good way to get attendees and then to eventually advertise them afterwards, but I won't rely on attendees using this um, this ad. But if you want to have if you wanna you wanna have an event and you wanna have a good list of attendees, this is a good place to start. But again, I won't rely a hundred percent on this. Um, mm, just make sure to check the quality of the users that are attending. It might not always be certain, like I said. The eleventh ad, and again, extremely extremely. Important, the get video views ad. Have more people to watch your video. Now with get video views, the campaign will be optimized to get as many video views as possible or longer views of your videos, regardless of the clicks or conversions or the engagement that it's getting. Now you can decide to choose for people that are watching um, 10 seconds, or you can decide to pay for impressions. So to pay for impressions, it's just you pay for, um, for more people to, to for the ad to reach more people and the 10 second view you're paying for only when somebody watches more than 10 seconds of the video again sometimes impressions works better sometimes a 10 second video view works better you want to test them both and see what works better uh, in your case now when you want to use get video views if the actual view of the video is more important for you than getting the users to convert or to get to your website now remember in conversions or a clicks campaign, you can also use a video, but not optimize for longer views. So test that as well, okay? Because video videos are extremely strong, especially today. Everybody's watching videos. So if you're already using videos, you can try and test a website conversion ad, try to test a clicks ad, uh, try to test the video views as well. But when I say get video views, it's that's not the only campaign 
you can use when using a video when using a video ad you can use you can use a video and with any other campaign with get video views campaign objective you're optimizing for more people to see that video and the video views are really good to make your video go viral as well to get a lot of organic traffic now this is basically how we use video views and how um, how I believe a lot of people should use it you have a video you should optimize for video views now you can actually create a custom audience from people that watched the video it can be three seconds 10 seconds 25 50 75 95 percent of the video and then you can create an audience of those people and then show them a new ad so you can easily target people who watched your video in the audience tool by creating a custom audience of users who engaged with your video okay so Let's say you have, uh, so for example, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing a video ad on, uh, a video view ad on one of my videos, which is like a Facebook ads tutorial thing, you know, I'm sending that out and I'm not advertising anything there. It's just a video. People are watching that video. I'm not sending them anything. I'm not even telling them to opt in to anything. Just a free video. Now I'm creating an audience on the back end of people that watch that video. And what I'm going to do with that audience is I'm going to actually send them a new ad, which offers them a free ebook on Facebook ads and they're basically they need to opt in and that's a lot more stronger than just sending them the um just sending them the 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 opt-in page because i send them the video views ad i send them the video they watch the video they get to know me they get to understand facebook ads better and then they much more relate with my ad that they sent that i send them later on now when doing video ads for e-commerce and when i'm talking about um when I'm actually doing video ads for e-commerce, I like to do it in a very non salesy type way where it's like a sort of fan page viral video type ad. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these on Facebook where it's like, there's like this, this video and then has like these texts on the top and the bottom with like a bunch of emojis, something like, I can't believe she did that. Or you got to see this. She could have almost gone raped. <laughs> I won't go that, uh, that far, but um, it's basically those clickbaity type videos that everybody watches where you see like it has tens of millions of views. So I like to do something like that uh, without making it seem that the ad is from the store. So try to make it look like your fan page showing a cool product. So if, for example, uh, here I have an image of this lighter. I think it's uh, this electric lighter. And I'll create this, I'll create this um, video and I'll put this text above the video. This is inside the video, by the way. This is not the ad copy. This is actually on the video. And the fan page won't actually sell it. Okay, instead of putting the link on the product on the post, I'll put the link to the product in the comments by somebody, which can be um, any virtual assistant or a friend. And I'll tell him to comment, hey, I found this product in this store. Check it out. And then I'll make that comment a top comment by just liking it, just telling a few people to like it. And then it will organically get a lot of likes and then it'll be a top comment. What actually you're doing here is that you're making it seem very friendly and like you're not trying to sell anything. But if somebody is interested in the product, they see it in the top comment. We've had a tremendous success with that. It's not always about just throwing the product link yeah. to the user. Okay, remember that. Um, if, if they see the image, if they see the, the video and they like it, they'll automatically see the top comment and they'll buy it. Even it's probably they have a higher percentage of buying it from the top comment from a user that's not related to the fan page than if you have just like an ad copy of, uh, uh, you have a video and then you have the ad copy of um, um, love, uh, love, uh, love uh, lighters, check this out. We're sending it down for 50% off, get it here. Okay, so that might work less good than just like a cool ad copy of uh, check out this cool lighter without sending anything and then the video and then the top comment being the link to the product. Of course, you can still put uh, the link to the product and the ad copy, but I really like to keep it on salesy. You can make it seem on salesy as well by putting in the link in the, in the, in the ad copy itself by saying something like, um, by the way, this store is selling it for 50% off, check it out or something like that. And the 12 ad objective that I want to talk about, and the last one as well, is the promote a product catalog objective, which is basically to sell more of your featured products. Now, this is insanely good for e-commerce. Basically, Facebook allows you to create a product catalog through the business manager 
Um, and once you've created your product catalog, you'll be able to dynamically promote your products, which will save you a tremendously amount of work um, and time. What actually happens here is that you can decide um, this ad, you can decide what type of people see it and the ad changes depending on the person. So let's say we have, um, we have a store and we have a, a lot of products and we, we have our feed, we need to have our feed integrated with Facebook. I'll show you in a second how to do that. We need to have our feed integrated with Facebook. And what you can do is you can create an ad to people who viewed or added a cart but not purchased, for example, in the last seven days, as you can see here, or added to cart but not purchased, or upsell products or cross-sell products or whatever you wanna do. You can even do a custom combination here. And what happens here is that every person sees a different ad. Even though you created one campaign and one ad set, depending on what the person saw and what the person did, he'll get a different ad. So if I have a turtle necklace and I have um, dancing shoes, and one customer um, viewed the dancing shoes and didn't buy, the ad that he will see is the ad with the dancing shoes. And we have a different customer that saw the turtle necklace and he didn't buy that, he'll see a turtle necklace, even though this is the same campaign and the same ad set, because that this, that's why it's called a DPA, a dynamic product ad. Okay, what we like to do, um, what we like to do is uh, we usually like to retarget using this and basically show uh, the product to people that didn't buy the product they saw and usually give them a coupon to finish the purchase. Okay, I'll talk about more about that in a second. Now, how do you wanna add the product feed to Facebook? Um, you can use Facebook product feed. These are apps, Shopify apps, Facebook product feed and Pixel, perfect. Both have um, links that you can use to create the product feeds and the way you upload them is you go into your business manager your ad account you go into all tools you go into product catalogs and then you go into product feeds and then you create a feed using the url that um that you take you get from these apps okay now what do you want to use promote a product catalog when you want to market your product catalog directly to the user and like i said a very good use of the promote product catalog is camp is um campaign is running retargeting dynamic product ads, which shows a specific ad depending on what actions the user made. So you have, um, you can say uh, upsell products. So you basically promote a certain product to people who bought a certain product in the last 14 days. Okay, so it depends on the user and what the user saw. It's literally dynamic. So every user will see a different uh, ad uh, every time. So someone might see the turtle necklace and someone might, might see the dancing shoes depends depending on the product that they saw. Um, I strongly suggest you go into this and you um, play with it a little bit because there's a lot to go over but it's really cool that you'll uh, you'll know how how it works so I strongly recommend you do that and yeah that's basically it for this video I hope you enjoyed it um, I think I think um, we went through a lot in this video and I, I hope uh, some of the cards got unfolded for you because there's a lot of information here that I haven't seen in a lot of places and something that you should take from this video, which is probably the most important thing, is the website conversion ads and how it basically works. You always want to optimize for the actions that have at least 20 to 30 conversions. Okay, always, always, always. Uh, don't forget to check out part number three, which is ad sets 101. We're gonna go dive deep into ad sets, how to use them correctly, how to target correctly, and really everything that you need to know about ad sets. Please don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it, and um, this way you won't miss uh, my new videos which talk entirely about Facebook ads and how to increase your conversions and promote your business using Facebook advertising. And if you haven't yet, check out my free cheat sheet, the three-step blueprint to create, run, and profit from uh, Facebook advertising at benmalal.com. So I'll see you guys in the next video. It was a pleasure.